So I did say that I'm going to discuss a little bit more about our niece, BP, because that's the favorite sport of Marian, favorite martial arts. She's a black belt in many of them. Um, our niece is one of her favorites. It's a native martial arts in the Philippines. It is unclear who, if there is one person that may be credited in the development of it. I think a huge chunk of it is because there was no written history. Everything was was passed on verbally. So it wasn't until recently that the effort to try and document everything um, in relation to its development actually started. It's known for uh, the use of the stick, but it is not everything. There's the use of butterfly knives. If th There should be something on the screen right now that would show you what a butterfly knife is, but it's a very popular weapon in the Philippines. And like many countries, especially Western countries, who are very heavy in using guns, but the Philippines are more into uh, blades. Okay, so they use that. They, they study the use of butterfly knives. So it's that little knife that doesn't look like a knife. But if you open the top and you pop it open, then the blade is going to, sh to pop up. The, unlike other unlike other martial arts, the hand-to-hand -hand combat is not something that you learn until much later on. So it's only after mastering the stick, the knives, and other blades would you actually go into hand-to-hand -hand combat. Arnis, by nature, is not an offensive sport. The name is a Spanish word that means shield that goes to show what the sport is really all about it is developed to defend yourself it wasn't until recently that it has become a formal sport in our national national competitions we call it the palarong pambansa it is yet to be recognized by the olympics it was because for the longest time people that would spar don't actually have armors so if you watch if you watch other sports, they wear armors. Taekwondo, karate, they wear armors and headgears. In our knees, they, we don't have that. Our knees don't have that. To try and regulate that to comply to the rules of international sports bodies, then they started wearing armors. So they have the headgears and they have body armors, but some of the old practitioners argue that it takes away from the actual experience, the essence of what Ainis is all about. The earliest recorded mention of Ainis, but they didn't call it Ainis yet, was during the arrival of Magellan in the Philippines. They were, when they came to the Philippines, when they arrived in the Philippines, they just saw that there is this certain thing that people were practicing. Later on, they they documented what that was about and eventually they started calling it Chinese.